Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios and it's the Fall Art Hall. Stick around. So as is per average for me, I tend to make a seasonal art trip to my local Blix uh, or just get an online uh, order to things and thanks computer. Uh, and I get a batch of stuff. Now, this time around, actually the only thing I needed was a couple of sketchbooks, because I'm on my current sketchbooks, like, uh, two-thirds through. Uh, I need a couple more to make sure I get, uh, last me at least until probably, like, maybe January, February. So I picked a couple of those, and uh, since I was making the trip anyway, I was like, you know, what else can I grab? Let's actually have a look at some things that that, that expansive idea, the idea of picking up things I don't necessarily need, but things that catch my attention, and maybe every now and then something that I've never seen before, so I pick one of those up too. So to start things off, I'm glad I remembered to get some, and that was uh, just some watercolor paper. This is some uh, Strathmore 400 series. I like this long, skinny size. It's very interesting. I've had, I've had a pad like this before. Uh, my current pad of uh, some, I've got some Canson XL in there. Uh, almost running out, and I was like, if I don't pick some of this up soon, uh, I'm going to regret it later, and I, again, really great, great size, I actually use these for my color maps a lot, uh, really good for that. I did also see a uh, giant pa uh, pad of sketch paper, it was like this big, and it was on clearance for like 20 bucks, and I was like, God, I wish I had the space for that, and I also have enough paper as it is. Uh, I got stretch bars enough for uh, a single 20, uh, 10 by 20 inch uh, canvas. Always good to, to get at least one canvas, canvas worth of something every time I go. I've got a decent amount of canvas in the corner, but nice to have, uh, nice to just to have an, uh, an extra set. As I mentioned, I picked up uh, two of my sketchbooks. These are uh, some Canton Sketch, 5x7 sketchbooks, wirebound. These are my go-to sketchbooks because they fit in my side pocket and I carry uh, my sketchbook with me. If I'm out of the house, my sketchbook is on me, so I need to make sure, one, it's a spiral bound so I can fit a pen in it, as well as, two, it's small enough that I can fit it in my pocket. We also picked up some uh, workable fixative. I noticed uh, I just did a little bit of pastel work this morning um, and was like, okay, cool, and I picked up my workable fixative and I was like, ooh, I'm going to need some more of this because I don't have enough. Of course, picking up sketchbooks, i got to think about pens every time I go. So I picked up a couple of the Unibow Visions as well as I uh, saw the store finally is carrying uh, some of the uh, Signos, which are the white ones. So picked up a couple of them, just general restock. In addition to, uh, I mentioned before about the, the clearance paper, which I wish I would have found. I love looking at the clearance shelf because there's almost always a really good deal on it, and sure enough, I found a tube of gouache. This is some nice M gram hooker screen gouache that was like for like three fifty. I think one of these normally is probably at least twelve or fifteen dollars. So don't quote me on that. Uh, but yeah, I was like, I cannot, cannot, cannot pass this up. Now, interestingly enough, this is a trip where I didn't buy any acrylic paint. Uh, instead, I bought actually some oils. Uh, that gouache. Uh, one of the things, and one of the things in particular was. Uh, a RNF uh, pigment stick. I've been slowly building up a set of these. This one is uh, Sienna Yellow Extra Pale. I actually have my, my original sample tubes, or sticks I guess, in the tubes, was about like a half stick of one of those, So I was, and, and I really like the color, so I was like, let me grab another one of these, uh, because I figured by the time that little one is gone, I'll be like, oh crap, I need more, so I picked up another one. Also in the oil side of the world, I picked up a Williamsburg oil. This is a transparent red iron oxide, same kind of color that's available in uh, Golden's other co color lines up, but this is, you know, the oil side of things. Um, I was looking at different colors. I wanted to pick up something transparent in particular, and I remembered this color when I was looking at all the other colors on the uh, shelf, uh, because I wanted to try my friend's uh, oil buff technique for acrylic paintings, uh, that, that overcoat uh, with, uh, with brownish paint with this reddish stuff, and I was like, ooh, that would look awesome because the glaze for this color looks great. Uh, so I was like, okay, this this could make a really good buff finish. Uh, so I particularly picked this up because it is a transparent oil. Uh, and now it goes with all the other ones. All right, next up are some pastels. Uh, 
when I started first started looking at stuff that was uh, okay, what do I want to get? What do I want to get? Uh, oh, Why well, they taped that shut? Okay, I need a knife or this. Um, one thing that I was sort of looking at was my just my set of pastels, and I was like, okay, what colors should I expand into to kind of round out my set? I just want to open this one as well. And I was thinking, I don't really have any oranges. So I picked up a uh, Rembrandt one that just says orange. Not like, not like cadmium orange, just orange. Nice and, and basic. It's probably like a cadmium orange. PO43, I think that's, yeah, something like that. Uh, and then there's a light orange as well. So I was thinking like pumpkin colors, basically, since we're coming up on, uh, coming up on fall, or in the midst of fall anyway. Well, I really don't have any oranges, so I think like a sort of that yellow orange and more and then more of a redder leaning one. That's generally pretty good. I was looking at blues as well, so I picked up a uh, a Blick Pastel Prussian Blue three, um, sort of a nice warm warmish blue, as well as another Blick one, which was uh, Thalo Blue Green Shade number four. So this was the number four being the darkest and number one uh, being the lightest for any of those ranges. Um, just sort of a nice general all around blue. And the last one was a, uh, another Rembrandt one. This is uh, Bluish Gray. Uh, this is one of those ones that was just like, I, th I have like a, like a regular neutral gray. But I wanted something that leans closer to what I'll, I do in a lot of my sketch work as well as a lot, of my, uh, uh, a lot of my regular acrylic paintings, which is cool gray rocks. So I think this one's going to be good for uh, transferring some uh, ideas and techniques between the mediums and, and having this particular color is going to be really good for that. And the last thing in this bag, but not the last thing total, is some Winsor Newton watercolor medium. This is granulation medium. Lovely. My friend's going to laugh about that later. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what granulation medium does, uh, all watercolors, not all, some watercolors have do what they call granulation. So we apply some of that uh, color down to the, the page. Uh, and what you'll notice is sort of a mottled effect when it dries, like the colors and the, the pigments and, and the everything kind of separates a little bit. Uh, and it does that on purpose. They're, wow, really? And it just does that uh, as is because uh, of, the, of the colors and, and, and certain colors do it, certain colors don't. This stuff ensures that the color does it regardless as if it's, if it's a granulation color or not. Uh, so it's like, hey, does this color granulate? Nope. Add some of this and you get that effect. I tried some of this a while ago, like two years ago, a friend of mine had it, and I was like, this stuff's cool, and I used it up, and I was like, great. So it's kind of been sitting on my long-term list, and now, it goes on the shelf. Now, in addition to my trip to the Blick, I also went to a place known as the Center for Creative Reuse. It's a offshoot of a place here in Pittsburgh called Construction Junction. Basically, it's a place where all kind of things get reused, from uh, building materials to paints and all kind of stuff like that. Off to the side of the big construction area is the Center for Creative Reuse, which is full of everything from paper to old cameras to knickknacks to pieces of wood, chunks of tile, literally anything you can possibly think of for a project, you can probably find it there. If you're a mixed media artist or an artist on a budget, uh, it's totally the place to start uh, in Pittsburgh and it's like, I just, I, like, I don't want to do, like, maybe want to try a medium, but I don't want to get, like, a ton of, like, acrylic paint. You can go there and get, like, a tube of some bargain basement stuff that's half used for, like, a, like a couple of bucks, uh, rather than going to the store and spending a whole bunch of money on stuff. So I do like going there from time to time just to explore, maybe find something that, you know, might catch my attention. Last time I was there, I think I found one of my molding pastes, actually. I think it was either the hard or the coarse. I can't really remember at this point. Uh, but I was just like... Hey, this is like a, almost a brand new jar for half the price. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that deal. So I walk, walked in, went straight to sort of the art supply section. And one thing that caught my attention was, wow, seriously, again? Oh, different person. <laughs> um, that's what I get for leaving that open. It was a big uh, drafter's uh, architectural triangle. I love these. Uh, I have not actually used one of these in a really long time um, because I haven't really had... Uh, the nerve to buy one, but this was a dollar. Uh, there were other ones that were 50 cents, but they were like missing corners and stuff. But this one was actually kind of intact. I kind of felt the edges. The edges felt, you know, clear and perfect. And looks like this could have easily come out of uh, a, a classroom or something. And honestly, it probably did. 
Um, but yeah, so really cool uh, big triangle for measuring and getting uh, nice solid angles and things like that with. Uh, definitely good for, uh, it's big enough that I'm going to be able to use this for canvas projects and be able to get those sharp edges and angles for, for my initial sketch a lot easier. So, yeah, I can't pass that up for a buck. And then the thing that really caught my attention was this box with brown box and Japanese characters. And I was like, huh, well, that's interesting. And I flipped it over and it said, Sumi Ink Grinding Stone, 10 bucks. And I was like, Hell, that's not bad. Now, I do have a grinding stone, and it's about that same size, maybe a little smaller. But one thing that I found as soon as I picked this up was, wow, this is heavy. This is really, really heavy by comparison. Actually, now that I'm holding them side by side, yeah, maybe it's just heavy because it's bigger. But I was like, huh. And it was sealed in this box. I couldn't get it open without, you know, causing a stir in the, in the store. And given the age of the box, I was like, you know, this has got to be maybe, you know, 80s-ish, 1980s. Uh, so I was like, huh. And I went and I paid for it and it was half off, so I got uh, a Sumi Ink Stone for five bucks, which is pretty good. And I'm genuinely curious, I don't even know what this is going to look like, but I'm really excited for it. Uh, it also says made in Japan, so you know it's the real deal. So... It looks like it might have been used a little bit. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a lot bigger. Wow. Yeah, it looks like it might have get, been used once. A little bit of residual ink in there. But right like that, big giant ink stone. So, this is the one I did have. This is the one I have now that I, that I picked up. Uh, so, yeah, it's a little bit bigger. I feel like the, uh, the well for the ink is just a little bit deeper, which is actually really, uh, really nice. It has a nice little Made in Japan sticker, I think. Yeah, it's about the same as the one on my new one. Uh, so who knows, it might have even been the same company. But, yeah, I'm, uh, that, that, this was a, a nice find, that uh, even if uh, I end up giving, leaving my old one away, because uh, this is probably not as uh, machined as this one is. Uh, when I noticed when I first got it, it totally looked like there was a, a drill tool that kind of came in and carved this out. This is a lot smoother. The edges are, are smoother and in there like that and yeah so I got a I got a second ink stone for bigger ink projects so that's the stuff I found today um, as always I hope for uh, any of you guys watching that uh, me showing this stuff off doesn't necessarily come off as me like flaunting any of this I'm just doing it to inspire you guys to let you know uh, stuff that's out there and things that inspire me and the things that are inspiring me for future projects so that's about it for me this week. As always, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and hit that like button. Get subscribed if you're not already. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that fun stuff. This is consider supporting on Patreon, and this has been Cinderblock Studios, and I'll see you guys next time. I should take this back up.